welcome to the next episode of Storytime. My name is Mahani Ma Johnson, and I'm so happy that you decided to join me again. Today, I'm going to be retelling you guys another one of my all-time favorite classic stories. So you know what that means. It's time to make our imagination hats again. Look at mine. Look what I did. I put some very cool, shiny stars on it. And you can do the same to yours. You can just make it whatever you want, okay? And if you guys are just joining us, the imagination hats are what's going to give us our imagination power when we listen to the story. All right, so go ahead and put it on your head. And then when you're ready, let's get going. All right, today we have a very special story. This was one of my favorite ones to work on. You guys are really gonna enjoy it. It even features a hit song that I made. So let's go. This is the Mahini McChanson version of the all-time classic, The Ants and the Grasshopper. Okay, here we go. It was a beautiful late spring morning in the town of Fishwater. Fishwater was known by all of the town's insects as the go-to place for the best competitive sports. Each spring all the way through summer, the insects would get together and compete to see which colony had the best teams and players. I mean, they really went all out. I mean, they went crazy. They had pre-show events on TV and fireworks and musical performances. It really was the town's most favorite pastime. The biggest and most well-known event was in the Ants Division, and it was for the Golden Supersonic Thunder Blaster Cup. It was usually won by the reigning champions, the Hinesville Pirates, but this year there was a new colony in town that everybody was eagerly waiting to see, called the Bodington Flapjacks. <laughs> Johnson! When I call a blitz, I need you guys to get in there and blitz. What is this? You guys are dancing around like a bunch of ladybugs. I'm an old man for crying out loud. Coming up on four years now and I can hit better than that. You're supposed to dive in there with everything you've got. Now let's run it again. But Coach Reed, that grasshopper up on the hill is distracting us. He's so bad, we can't even concentrate. Just listen to him. But don't you talk back to me, Momo. There's gonna be a thousand distractions once we get into an actual game. Now get your honey back on the field. Yes, sir. Coach Pooter, run and tell that young grasshopper to get over here. Yes, Coach Reed. I uh, will do that right now. A few moments later, the grasshopper hopped on down to Coach Reed. Son, is there a reason you keep playing that banjo out of my practice? Well, yes, sir. I like to watch you guys practice. It lets me see all the hard work and dedication that it takes to become great at something. Well, my sweet honey, that is the best flippin' answer that I've ever heard. What's your name, son? The grasshopper looked him straight in his many compound eyes. My name's Stanky, Stanky McNash. I just started playing this here banjo, and I'm gonna be the best player and singer in all of the 493 colonies of Fishwater. The grasshopper told him with confidence. Well, son, I would highly recommend that you go and take some private lessons or something, because that is some of the worst banjo playing that I've ever heard. Stanky looked at the coach, and then he looked back down to his banjo and paused for a second. Do you really think that I'm that bad? The coach shook his head and put one of his arms around Stanky. Son, your playing is driving my players crazy, it's so bad. Right when Coach Johnson said that, he could tell that he made Stanky very upset. Now listen here, son. If you're as smart as I think you are and you're a hard worker, then you can surely get better than that and do whatever you want to do with that. What do you call it again? It's a banjo. A banjo, yeah. Just go find someone that can help you out. A private teacher or something. You need a coach. In just a second. Johnson! Johnson, get over here! You're gonna make me lose my bread crumbs! 55 Eagle is a slant, not a post! Go ahead, run the post again. See what happens next. Jiminy! Listen, son, I gotta get back to practice. These kids are gonna give me a heart attack. The coach said as he ran towards one of the players screaming at him. How many times are we gonna run that play? Well, I appreciate up, your candor, You're sir. Stanky You're yelled in the hopes that Coach Reed would hear him. Upon arriving back at his house, Stanky went straight onto the internet and immediately found one teacher in the area. Master 
Warren Jilliams. Hmm, sounds professional. I think I'll give him a ring. Why not? Hello? Yes, it's this Master Warren Jilliams? Yes, tis I, young man. How may I help you? Stanky didn't recognize the accent, but it sounded exotic. Yes, my name is Stanky. Stanky McNash, and I'm looking for someone to teach me how to play the banjo and write songs, and I want to be the best that anyone has ever heard. Do you think you can help me? Well, I don't see why not. Yes, yes. Why don't you come visit me tomorrow at 3 p.m. sharp? Master Warren told him. The address is on the bottom of my Ant Space page. Oh, wow, that was fast. Oh, okay, thank you, sir. I'll see you then. The next day, Stanky arrived at his house at 3 p.m. on the dot. Well, hello, young lad. Welcome to my studio. Master Warren said as he looked inside at all of the awards hanging in his entryway. Wow! It looks amazing in here! Stanky was astonished. There's so many instruments and awards! This is incredible! Stanky was feeling the most inspired he's ever been. Okay, let us begin. Why don't you play me something so I can see what we're working with? Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold your horses, young man. Slow your roll, young fellow. Your instrument isn't something you just ram into your arms like a bowl of jello. Stanky slowly put his banjo down next to him as he was waiting for more of Master Warren's wisdom. You say you really want to be a great player? Master Warren asked him as he crossed four of his arms and leaned back into his chair. Yes! Oh, yes, sir! I want to be the best! The best that anyone's ever seen! Master Warren paused for a second. Well... There are few players who have the will and the talent and desire to do so. It is not going to be just any easy feat, you know. I'll tell you right now, you are definitely going to have to work the hardest and the smartest, and you are without a doubt going to have to learn some patience, my boy. Now I'd say, from hearing what I've just heard, that you certainly have your work cut out for you. Are you willing to do exactly as I say and practice exactly how and what I tell you? Stanky's eyes opened wide and he leaned forward. Oh, yes, sir. You have no idea how bad I want this. Okay, young man, I believe you. But only on one condition. If you come back to my house next lesson and have not practiced what I have given you, then we will no longer continue lessons. I only spend my time with the most eager and devoted of students. Stanky shook his head in agreement. Oh, yes, sir, I promise. I'm going to work so hard. You just watch. I'm going to crush it. Master Warren looked at him and took another short pause for dramatic effect. Okay, then. For today's lesson, I'm going to introduce you to a very close friend of mine, and I want you to get to know him very well. Master Wand held out his hand and hit a button on a little black and gray device. This is called a metronome. It will help you keep and divide time. You see, the first thing you must learn is that there are three elements that make up all of music. Master Wand Melody, went on to teach him the rest of the lesson, and, and at the end, he and handed Stanky a very four. short and simple piece of music. Okay, Stanky. I want you to learn this small piece of music. Adhere to my rules of study and play it perfectly in time for tomorrow's lesson. Oh, yes, sir, I will! Stanky replied with a giant smile on his face, and he ran and hopped home as fast as he could. The next day, Stanky arrived back at Master Wan's house. Master Wan! Master Wan! Stanky shouted as he walked right in. Stanky, did you forget something? Master Wan looked at him and lifted one of his many eyeballs as a sign that Stanky did something wrong. Oh, shoot! Oh, shoot! I'm sorry! I forgot to knock! Yes, you did. Why don't you go outside and try it again? Stanky went outside, closed the door, and knocked three times. The door opened again. Well, hello, young Stanky. Are you ready to play for me? Master Wan looked at him with his face full of hope. Oh, yes, sir, I think I've got it. I think I really nailed it. Stanky sat down and started to play. Well done, my boy, well done. It seems we may have a contender for the world's greatest after all. 
Master Warren said as he gave Stanky a big, well-done smile. Today we will move on to multiple notes to be played on each string. He handed Stanky another piece of paper, and Stanky looked at it with a very confused look. What the heck? Don't worry, my boy. We will get it. Now pay attention. From each of the At notes, the end of the lesson, Master One gave him another effect. short piece of music. Go ahead and work on these and come back to me in two days. I have an award ceremony to attend, so I won't be able to make it tomorrow. Okay, Master One, I will! Stanky told him, and he hopped on home to practice. After a few hours of practicing, Stanky was starting to get very frustrated. Dang it! This is impossible! I'm never gonna get this! This is so unbelievable! Stanky screamed as he kicked and smashed his entire bookshelf over. Oh, lollipops! Mom's gonna kill me! After staring for a second at the colossal mess that he just made in his room, Stanky took a short break and just kept trying and failing and trying and failing. And he did this all the way until it was time for his next lesson. Master One, I'm here! Dang it! Oh, come in, my boy. Come in. How is it going? Stanky looked at him and seemed very upset. I'm terrible. I'm no good at this. It's too hard. I'm never going to be great. Stanky said as he sank low into his chair. So low he was almost lying down. Master Warren looked at him and smiled. My boy, there is no reason to be upset. You've only just been attempting to read music for three days. Being a great musician isn't as easy as learning how to tie your shoes. It takes time and patience and diligence. My boy, there is a quote that I heard from a book a good friend once gave me. And it read, Life by the yard is hard, but by the inch it's a cinch. If you keep going as you are, expecting to make radical leaps of improvement, you will certainly be frustrated and most likely want to quit. But if you slow yourself down and become okay with even learning one or two things a day, then before you know it, you will wake up and be that great musician that you so desire. You must be patient, my boy. Master Wan's face looked as if he was waiting for Stanky to reply. But Stanky just sat there, looking sad. Oh, come on, cheer up, my boy. This happens to the greatest of musicians. Really? Of course, of course. Nobody is born with pristine greatness. It must be honed and toned and worked on. Okay, but I'm telling you, you're not gonna like it. Here we go. Over the next month or so, Stanky kept practicing, and he eventually learned to be okay with making mistakes and to be patient with himself and he had eventually become quite good at the banjo. So much so that he decided to go to the Bodington Flapjacks football practice again. Carter! Carter, get over here! We're running his own defense and you're out there chasing Johnson around like he's the new girl in school! Get your head in the game or I'm gonna sit you on the bench next to the cheerleaders! Just then, Stanky came hopping and flying in and landed right in front of Coach Reed. Coach Reed! Coach Reed! Listen, I've been practicing and I'm getting a lot better! Listen, listen! And he started playing some of the music that Master One gave him. Well, my sweet lord! <laughs> Everyone, get in here now! Dig, dig! Let's go, Valentino Hustle! You guys have six legs and you're running around like you only got two! Alright, everybody listen up. Go ahead and play, son! Yeah, go ahead and play with something! Now, do you all remember how absolutely terrible this young man was a month ago? I said, do you remember? Yes, 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 yes we do! It was terrible! Horrendous! Now this is what progress looks like. If you guys worked half as hard as this young man, then we've been winning every game out there. What did the year players raise a leg? Yes, Johnson, what is it? He sure is really good. All of the other teams have bands and a halftime show for the final game, but we don't have one. Yeah, yeah, said Johnson. Yeah, can he write us a song to play at the halftime show next month? Another player shouted. Coach Reed turned to Stanky. 
Well, you heard it, son. Is that something that you think you can make happen? We've got a sound team that can set up all the amplification equipment for you. All you need to do is come up with a song for us. Well, I think so. What kind of a song do you guys want? What, what should it be about? Stanky asked them. Sports! One of them shouted. Footballs! Football bats! More of them screamed. Getting ready to play football! Get us pumped up! Yeah! 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 yeah. Everyone shouted with glee. Okay, guys, I'll come up with something for you. Stanky yelled back. All of the players cheered and ran back to practice with confidence, knowing that they were going to have a cool music performance to represent them if they made it to the finals. The next day, Stanky went to his lesson and told Master Warren about his new project. Hello, Stanky. Welcome back. Master Warren! Master Warren, the Bordington Flapjacks want me to run and perform a song at their final football game! Jack yelled in excitement. Oh, that's fantastic, my boy. Just brilliant indeed, young Stanky. What is this performance, you say? He asked him as he put down the trophy he was polishing. It's in exactly one month at the end of summer. Do you think you can help me? Stanky said with a face full of hope. But of course I will. What kind of song do they want? They want something about sports and footballs and getting ready to get pumped up for the game. Oh, well, what a tremendous opportunity you have here. Well, it seems you have your concept already. So the next thing you need to do is get in the mood and into the excitement of the game. You should ask yourself questions like, what do they need to play football? And... I know! Balls! They need balls to play! He said as he cut off Master One mid-sentence. Well, I suppose that's true. Okay, so now you have to come up with some lyrics and a way to present those balls to them and then come up with some chords that fit around those lyrics. Or vice versa, depending on whatever you're feeling. Stanky gave him a confused look. Chords? What are chords? Well, you see, chords are when... That lesson, Master Juan and Stanky went over chords and how to play them, and also how to write them down so that he could keep track of each section of the song. They continued their lessons for one more month, and at the end of the summer, Stanky's song was finally ready for performance. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half, with the score, Tennisville Pirates 28 and the Bodington Flapjacks 7. Please visit our food concessions for the best fresh frosted cake crumbs and leftover soda pop. But hurry, because you won't want to miss our halftime performances by Jodeci, Drake the Snake, The Beetle, and our brand new artist, Stanky McDash. At the end of The Beetle's last song, Ants in My Pants, Stanky was waiting behind the stage. Stanky was starting to get very nervous. But then he remembered what Master Juan told him, to just have fun and be in the moment and enjoy the music. At that moment, the curtains opened up and Stanky McNash walked out on stage. Hello! Whoops. How's everybody doing out there? Oh man, this is awesome. Going, starting out the day Walking down the driveway Cause I'm heading out 
and all of the ants ran up to him to tell him how awesome the song was. Way to go, Stanky! Woohoo! Way to go, yeah! The entire team was jumping on top of him and eventually he was at the bottom of a giant pile of ant football players. Oh my gosh, get off of me! He tried to yell as he was getting smothered by the ants. Eventually he was able to escape the pile. Over by one of the tents he saw Coach Reed and the other coaches talking and he quickly hopped over to them. Hey, Coach Reed! Coach Reed, did you like the song? Was it good enough? He asked. My boy, I'm so dang proud of you. We love the song, and the team is so happy. Just look at them. They are pumped up. Hopefully, we can bring it to them in the second half. Nice work, Hoss. The coach gave Stangy a pat on the back of his left wing and walked away towards the field. Okay, bye, said Stanky. Stanky walked around a bit more and looked at all at the different kinds of insects sitting in the stands. He really was happy to have performed for such a giant crowd and he was feeling so proud of himself. As he was walking up to the bleachers to watch the second half, he saw Master Wan standing over by the performance group tents. Master Wan! Master Wan! Did you like the performance? What did you think? Was I any good? He asked in anticipation. Absolutely marvelous, young Stanky. Pristine timing and the song's musical flow was quite striking. Yes! said Stanky as he threw one leg up into the air quickly. Stanky! Stanky, my boy, all of your patience and hard work really paid off. I'm surely waiting to see what else you will create in the future. I am proud to say that I am now your number one fan. Keep going, my boy, and don't ever stop. Stanky felt so honored and humbled by Master Wan's comments. The two of them watched the second half of the game together and talked about plans for Stanky's future musical career. As the game was coming to an end, the Flapjacks had caught up and were about to take the lead. Come on, Jets! Let's go, Flapjacks! Give it to them! Some of the crowd yelled from the stands. Let's go, Jets! Let's go! The crowd was chanting and everybody was standing on their hind legs waiting for the play to happen. Hey, Stanky. Can you let me know what's going on down there on the field? My eyesight isn't quite what it used to be. Master Wan asked. Okay, no worries. I can't believe it. It's fourth and long and the flapjacks are on their last push. They're only down by four with just three seconds on the clock. Let's go, Jax. Let's go, Jax. And here we go. The quarterback hikes. The, whoa, the linebackers are blitzing and he's getting chased. There's a tackle. There's a receiver wide in the end zone. He saves him, he saves him. He's back to pass. He launches it. Master One were walking out to the parking lot. Hey, Master One, can I come tomorrow for an extra lesson? Master One looked at him. Stanky, the wife and I are going on vacation. Go ahead and practice those new finger exercises I gave you, and I will see you in two weeks. Okay, then, I guess I'm gonna go head over to the team and congratulate them. I'll see you in two weeks, Master One. Stanky was so filled with joy and excitement, the two of them shook antennas and went their separate ways. As Stanky was hopping over to the team, he saw Coach Reed and the Happy Ants celebrating. Hey guys, nice job! Really well done out there! You guys came back and gave it to him! Thank you, we did! Oh yeah, we did! Oh my gosh, we did! Yeah, baby, come on! Coach Reed came over and stood next to Stanky. Son, why don't you come on back with us and celebrate? We're gonna sing and dance and dig into some of our winter food supply. Stanky paused for a second. A winter food supply? Oh, no. Oh, no! The winter food supply! Oh, my gosh, I forgot! I, I can't even believe it! I forgot! No! No! Stanky yelled. What's wrong, Stanky? Said Coach Reed. I was just working so hard on practicing my instrument and making everything perfect for you guys that I completely forgot to save up for, for the winter. Now I'm going to starve to death. I don't want to die. I just got really good at the banjo. You 
know what, son? Coach Reed put his hand on Stinky's head. Under normal circumstances, I would have to let you go hungry and learn your lesson the hard way. But, you know, given you worked so hard and inspired my kids to win the Golden Supersonic Thunder Blaster Cup, we're gonna let you stay with us for the winter. Oh, wow, said Stinky. That would be awesome! I promise I'll play music and make songs for you guys every day. I promise, I promise! Stanky said as he felt a deep gratitude for the ants and Coach Carter. And I promise, next summer I will make sure to store food for the winner. And the ants and the grasshopper became great friends and lived happily ever after. The end! And there you have it, guys. What an unbelievable story. Those ants are so beautiful for giving the grasshopper the food that he needed. You know, Stanky worked so hard for the ants to get them a performance that they could be proud of so that it would inspire them. And I think they were grateful and they ended up helping him out, you know. But it's not to go without saying that not everybody's going to be in this kind of situation. So if you have something that's as important to do is get all your food to the winner so that you don't die, then you gotta go ahead and do that, you know? But the ants were just really nice in this situation. That was a little bit different from the original. The ants were just really mean. They let the grasshopper die. But I think also that the grasshopper was kind of, you know, kind of a pompous. So that's probably why they did that. But just let me know in the comments if you guys have any more morals that are mixed out or if you wanna just say anything about the story. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. And make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe. And I'll see you guys